I'm looking at the sheep in the wadi. I see Janjaweed coming, quickly, on horses and camels, with Kalashnikovs shooting and yelling, Kill the slaves! Kill the blacks! They killed many of the men with animals. I saw people falling on the ground and bleeding. They chased after children. Some of us were taken, some we didn't see again. All our animals were taken, camels, cows, sheep and goats. Then the planes came and bombed the village. We were running from the burning houses. Janjaweed and soldiers with guns and planes and bombs came, all together quickly. They were shooting. My uncle was shot. I saw them taking women and girls away. All of us, my family, we were screaming and running from the Janjaweed to hide in the wadi, holding each other by the arms to keep together. Here in camp we are safe, but my father, he was lost. There were soldiers from Sudan, Janjaweed and planes and bombs. I saw the Janjaweed take girls and women. The women were screaming. They seized them, they took them by force. The pretty ones were taken away. Girls were taken, small girls too, I think five and seven and 14. Some came back after four or five hours. Some we haven't seen again. Well, the death toll now is between 400 and 500,000 people. Um, and as we keep negotiating, um, more people are killed every day. And I guess the question is, who has the power and what are the interests here um, if we're going to stop it? Um, if the UN is going to get involved, I mean, the first thing would be a no-fly zone so that helicopters aren't going in supporting danger with militias. <coughs> that would at least give those people a fighting chance. My, my own conviction is that without really knowing the history of Darfur, all the efforts are going nowhere to, to solve this problem. Because at least the present government is, uh, knows more secrets of the government. And they are using it politically uh, to divide and rule. And, and, and unfortunately, they don't care about or they care only for being continuing in government. So it's, it's a military government which is there for 17 years, and uh, they are trying, uh, this is the longest for any military government to rule the country, and they are trying to, to, to continue this. China has turned not only in the biggest investor on the African continent, China is the biggest donor of uh, development cooperation aid on the African continent. And they give it free of charge in the terms of political conditions. There's no political link linkage as you would find with uh, World Bank funds, EU funds, whether it's gender mainstreaming, whether it's environment protection, whether it's democratic change. They simply give the money and say, and now you do whatever you want with it. And they have no problems in cooperating with Mr. Mugabe of Zimbabwe mm -hmm. or with the Khatoum government. <coughs> no problem, no moral or whatever problem. Now, again, you can say you make business with everybody. You make business. You don't put morale into it or human rights violations. That has always well, been the case. Some people say that about too. But yes, it's the same thing. It's, uh, it's business. It's all about business, pragmatic access to markets. Well, I do have an article up on the IR bulletin board actually uh, about just this issue that China is trying to clean up its, its act because of the Olympic Games and they're very worried about the Olympics right now. So the Olympics might just be the, the lever that we need um, to stop the killing in Darfur. Um, it might actually be more effective than trying to lobby the UN uh, mm -hmm. 
or, or the United States or the European Union. Uh, it's bad to say that, um, but the Olympics mean a lot of money. It probably means more money than uh, the resources in Sudan. Um, and so therefore, uh, there will be an interest in making sure that it works. The question is whether anyone will do that.